powerful collaborations, cutting edge science, and curious minds coming together for a glimpse of the future. Stay tuned as we look at the latest updates on some of the most promising technology projects. Welcome to our podcast. I'm Peter Ballant from Technicon, and today we take a closer look at the Ledlum project. This is an EU-funded effort to bring efficiency and size reduction to the drivers that are used in LED lighting. The end result being more flexibility and reliability in lighting design. To finish this project on time and as planned, partners are meeting today at Technicon here in Austria to discuss some details prior to completion, which is only a few months away. We start off with Arnold Nott from the Technical University of Denmark. Tell us what you do and how you're involved with Ledlum. My name is Arnold Nott. I'm associate professor at the Technical University of Denmark, I'm working there with research and working there with education within power electronics. Within the, the Ledlum project, I've been uh, originally uh, involved in starting the project. I uh, met with some guys from Tridonic uh, at a conference in 2015, when we sat down and looked at the business case for, for technology and went on to write an application to the European Commission. And our topic fit in very well there, so we were very pleased with that. To summarize, Ledlum is a project which aims to increase the efficiency, decrease the size of the drivers that operate uh, LEDs as we know them today. Is this for commercial products, or will people actually see this on the consumer level? So if I walk into a store, what would I see that might be an end result of your research and your work? Well, what we are expecting to happen very soon within the next couple of years is that the LED drivers will have a way longer lifetime compared to the nowadays LED drivers, but also compared to the old uh, bulbs. Uh, so we expect lifetime and we expect certainly a lot of energy savings, which are there already today in the nowadays uh, LED bulbs, which are out there in the market. So we expect to keep those and uh, a great improvement from the Ledlum project should be to decrease the size, increase the power density of the of the driver and therefore make it uh, able to fit LEDs in, in smaller enclosures than before. Okay, and you're here in Austria for a technical meeting for Ledlum and this is the end of the second day. How are things shaping up here? Because this project is over in April. So are you on task or is there a lot of work to be done before April? Well, we are just about to finish off and uh, and look at the results that we got. Along the way, the plan changed as we, as we went uh, uh, along in the project. And we are seeing now a great number of good results. We've been playing some Lego there with a lot of uh, brainstorming, a lot of ideas during the last couple of days. And we can see that we will actually have a lot of good things to show in a couple of months. Okay, good. What about unexpected things that happened during the course of the project? Well, some unexpected stuff that happened was the level of integration. It actually showed out, uh, proved to be possible to do uh, smaller drivers with less integration than we originally thought would be necessary. So we could go along with cheaper components, with components that are available on the market already. So actually those uh, results have accelerated the, the plan for going to market as far as I can see it. And in Ledlam, there, is there a demonstrator at the end that can be shown to the European Commission to say, this is what we've done, this is what we've achieved? It looks like from the discussions from the last two days here that we will have more than one demonstrator, actually, which is good. So we will have low-cost solutions, we will have high-performance solutions and various other uh, bricks uh, to show that actually fit together. That's one thing. And the other thing of your question is that I hope that we are not only showing it to the European Commission, but we're showing it actually to the public, which makes a difference. Because the European Commission, there's one or two persons that might buy one or two light bulbs, but I hope that we're going to solve at the end ways more LED lighting than just to the European Commission. A lot of time and effort has went into researching LED lights. Can, can we say that they're here to stay? Oh, I hope the, that they are definitely here to stay, uh, to stay because it looks like they are going to save a lot of energy uh, compared to the 50, 70, 80 watt uh, bulbs that we used to have. Now we're driving them with 3, 10, maybe 11 watts and get the same amount of light out there. So that's making the planet greener than it was before. 
And on top of everything else that you have to develop with the Ledlam project, you also have to follow a certain set of standards that are issued by the, the European Union uh, regarding safety and power consumption and these kinds of things within the homes of consumers. Is that right? Yeah, there's a, for the European market, there's something called the CE label, which you have to confirm with. If you want to go in other markets, like for example, the US American market, it would be the FCC label you need to be compliant with. Within a research project, we are not fulfilling all of those criteria and we don't need to because that's a development project and, and the, the man on the street is not paying for that through, through the European Commission's uh, taxpayers' money. Um, but we are definitely looking very much sure that we are hitting the, the target on the most important ones and the most critical ones and all the other stuff that's normal development will be done after the project by the, uh, by the industry partners. Okay, and how does the European LED market measure up with the rest of the world in terms of lighting? Uh, I think everybody has a focus on it. So the whole world is actually working on that. There is a, a lot of stuff going on in the US. There is a lot of stuff going on in Asia. Um, there are definitely other projects around in the world which are doing good um, and which is very great to see. We are getting inspired from them. They are getting inspired from us. We meet each other on international conferences. During the project, we've been in Madrid meeting with the uh, people there and in Taiwan. Uh, that's a, a conference called PowerSoc, Power Systems on Chip. And there we are meeting with international people. The next one is going to be in the U.S. Um, uh, next year, in 2020, we are going around the world and visiting those three continents uh, and taking turns there. Okay, and so this consortium gains its power by the diversity. It's made up of several different companies and players from across Europe. What happens at the end of Ledlam when you've achieved your, your goals and now we have technology that somehow needs to be leveraged? Um, is there a follow-up to Ledlam or is this technology sort of then taken up by the partners for their own research? Well, we've been just internally discussing that, how the industry partners are taking the research results from, from this project. And uh, we're just investigating which of the results are feasible for, for direct further conversion into products and which of the results need more research to get them closer for, to industrialization. Okay. Is there anything else about Ledlam that you would like to say? I'm very happy about the project. It's been a very diverse project. It's been a very international project. We've had various inputs uh, along the way, and uh, we had uh, some great changes along the way in the project. Um, changes tell me during those research projects that I've been previously running and also within Ledlum, the more you change the plan, the more innovation you're actually doing. That's a correlation in, in, in my eyes there. And it looks like there's been uh, quite a uh, quite a lot of changes in Ledlum, which have been to the very good of the project. So I'm very much looking forward to to finish it off now. A couple of months left, and we have great results that we uh, can put together. So I want to say thank you for coming down today. You're in the middle of a technical meeting, and you took the time to talk with us to share a little bit about the Ledlum project. I want to say thanks and wish you much success until the end of April, where you have to present your results. Thank you very much, and thanks for hosting us. Thank you. Next up in the studio, we speak with Mickey Madsen. He's the founder and CEO of Nordic Power Converters, which is an innovative company in Denmark that designs and makes small drivers for LED lights. Joining Mickey is Thomas Anderson, also from Nordic Power Converters. They're here in Austria for the technical meeting for the Ledlam project. Welcome, gentlemen. Can one of you tell me, from your perspective, what Ledlam is all about? Well, the project is all about making miniaturized power supplies for general LED lighting, making the power supply smaller, longer lasting, and also cheaper to manufacture. Okay, and these are power supplies for LED lights that could be found where? Anywhere from uh, retail application, hospitality, industrial lighting, street lights in general. It's, it's, it's a new may way of making power supplies, uh, which can be utilized. It seems to me creating the new driver is just a small investment into using LEDs as, uh, as a future source of lighting. So uh, the European Commission obviously put money into this. They must feel that uh, this is a, a technology that will have some payoff in the future. As we know, it's 
LED lighting is more efficient and smaller, but your project intends to make it even smaller by reducing the size of the, the driver. Is that is that right? That's true, yes. Yeah. And basically, the idea is uh, increasing the frequency in, in our case, uh, and thereby we can get the components smaller, uh, reduce the price, reduce the weight. Um, so, so that's one of the main goals of, uh, of the Letland project. Okay. And right now, this technical meeting, is, if we look at this, we're sort of at the end of the project, right? You have a few more months, or till what, April of next year? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how is it coming so far? Uh, have you made anything? Have you demonstrated your, your concepts? Yeah, we made a few demonstrators so far, but we've been mainly been focusing on building blocks and so so on. So now it's actually time for everything to come together and uh, in a nice full system demonstrator. So we are quite busy here the the last months to really demonstrate, but so far we have good results and subsystems and so on. But now we need to to combine it all and and show it all here in the in the coming months. So that was we're expecting some some very nice end results, but. Uh, Everything needs to come together now in the in the last month. Okay, and then is there something? Is there a takeaway? Is there a product that comes out of this, or uh, any kind of um, tangible? Uh, I wouldn't say that will come a direct product out of it, but it will be uh, in the right direction of a, of a product uh, showing the what, what you really can gain out of this technology. Since the project is ending, what happens when you if you discover something really cool and then the project stops uh, is this technology can you leverage this in your own field or in your in your companies yeah for sure you can say this project is heading right into the core of, of our company and what we're doing uh, so so we can utilize the results from the the project and some of the results are let's say good enough or advanced enough mature enough that we can utilize it in products for the coming few years and some of the results are on a more early let's say research stage where they need to be matured more before we can utilize them in products and whether we can do that directly uh, inside our own company or we need to continue the collaboration with some of the partners that depends a bit on the the results that we get here in the final months so that's that's really exciting to uh, to see how much we we get the solutions in the in the coming months right and how is the meeting going so far i mean you get you sounds like you get together once or twice a year for these technical meetings. Yeah, that's where we are meeting. And besides from that, we have uh, also telcos where we are talking together, but it's really here when we have the physical meetings that we can look each other in the eyes and agree on stuff, uh, what should be the focus for, for the next period of time. And and until now, it's uh, it's, it's really beneficial. Um, so a good plan is set for the last uh, coming month. Um, and yeah, so it, it's really great to have these, uh, these meetings. Um, Okay, and for the people who don't necessarily maybe understand how these projects work, what is it in the end? What do you have to do? Uh, do you have to show this to the European Commission? Do you have to give a report? Um, it seems to me that you must have to show in some way that you've completed the project. Yeah, so we need to make a report in written format showing that we reached the target or at least close to the target that we set for the for the project. But we're also discussing how to make an an event uh, showing, demonstrating live uh, the performance of the solutions that we have developed during this project. And we may also also make a more public event, inviting partners, customers, and so on to, to show, see the results of, uh, of this project. That's something we're discussing at this meeting and we'll probably conclude on the plans in, uh, in January. Looking back over the last couple of years, because I believe this was a three-year project, what kind of challenges did you see? Maybe something that was uh, not seen in the beginning I guess you have some uh, you you have some idea uh, initially that you have some thoughts that this this is uh, could really work and then you start to work with it and uh, you start to integrate between the partners in the project and then you see oh this this cannot work we need to find another solution for it uh, and there I think there has been some uh, there has been some things where we we have looked into it and said that this this cannot be as we initially thought. Um, th there's a lot of research involved in this as well, um, and something just goes slower than expected. So uh, because we also depended on on other partners outside of this consortium, um, and and things takes time, and it's something that you cannot really change uh, and if it doesn't work the first time you need to try again with a slightly different way and and that takes time again and that what we have facing a couple of times uh, 
I think it's quite normal in these uh, kind of uh, long horizon projects. Um, yeah, you're going down roads that haven't been exactly. explored before. So, yeah. yeah, I suppose there's always some sort of roadblock that you have to jump over, so to speak. Yeah, and then some of the process involved in this project takes quite some time. So if we find out that we've been going in a wrong direction or should pursue another direction, some of the process just means that it takes maybe a year before we can start the next iteration. So that's also something that we need to handle. And yeah, with many different partners that works in different ways, that's also something to, to make sure to utilize the resources in the right way and make sure that everybody gets the input and output from each other when they need it to in order to, to make that work right. Um, that's easy in the beginning when you make a project plan and expect that everything will go as as planned or as expected. But once reality hits, then then you have to adopt and, and that's that's also a challenge to to find out how to, to make that efficient and in a way that, that works for everyone. Okay. So for this project, both of you are doing technical type things, right? Or do you, do you have a certain capacity that you're acting in? Is it is it a sort of an engineering kind of role? I'm the technical lead for the project and, and mainly doing sort of the planning and, and so on. And, and Thomas is, is doing a, a lot of the engineering work from, from our company. How does the EU measure up in terms of uh, LED lighting technology versus the rest of the world, for example? I think uh, EU are performing good and have been for a long time in, in lighting in general, but, but are struggling with, um, or at least there's a strong competition from, uh, from especially Asia, uh, where they have been very focused on let's say, cost-efficient solutions uh, previously, they are now starting to move more into the at least mid-end of the market with, with better design and better performance and better quality. And, and European manufacturers are sort of struggling to, to finding their way to, to sure, make sure that we continue to add more value than, uh, than our cheaper competitors from, from the Asia and, and find ways to differentiate in the market on, on this one, design, quality, features, and so on. But we need to bring something additional to the market. Uh, I think that's one of the places where Letlum can actually make a difference and, and make us capable of making products in a way that our competitors from especially Asia can't do. So when you look at Letlum project, the things that you're studying now, is it is it reality to think that in five or 10 years, this technology could be used in the consumer products that we see or the industrial products that we see out there? Yeah, for sure. I expect it to be much sooner than, than 10 years. Maybe it's not within the first year, but uh, within three or five years, uh, for sure, yeah. Okay, so what you're doing today has a real effect on the, the, the market in a few years down the road. No doubt. I mean, we can already now see that the results of the project are good. If they are good or great, that's what we'll see in the coming months, but they are already now uh, good enough that we for sure know that we'll utilize them in, in products going forward. Are there any new or better lighting solutions that, that might take over in this area, um, such as laser light, for example? I don't know. I can, you can say that LEDs has changed the industry within a, a decade, going from incandescent bulbs to LEDs. That's been changing very, very fast. I think it's one of the fastest changing changes in, in any industry. Uh, whether that will happen again, um, I don't expect so. But, but people weren't expecting that LEDs would have change the market so fast as they've done. So for sure, LEDs will be used some places. I don't think it will be possible to compete on, on price uh, with uh, with LEDs. OLEDs will probably also go get into the market, especially in designer-oriented lighting and so on. But the efficiency that, at least for now, it seems that you can get with OLED is not as high as LEDs. So I think for general lighting in the mass market, my expectation is that LEDs will be, be the standard also for the next decades to come, but laser lights and OLEDs will for sure also uh, get more into the market in, in niches, uh, yeah. Are there any downsides to LED lighting? Well, one of the downsides which we're trying to, to solve in this project is that while LEDs are, are good, they're efficient, they are long lasting, they're small, giving you new design opportunities and so on, the, the driver is big and bulky, limiting some of the designs that you have. Um, it's also one of the main failure mechanisms. So with an incandescent bulb, for instance, you don't you don't have this big brick of a power supply needed. You can just plug the 230 volts into the bulb and you have a nice looking luminaire. Now you suddenly have a big bulky driver that you need to incorporate in the luminaire or hide under the ceiling or something like that. Uh, in the same way, the driver is responsible for roughly 90% of the failures in LD products, um, meaning that even though LDs are lasting long, some LD products fails much sooner than uh, than expected. That can be solved if you 
a good in your engineering and so on. But I think many consumers have tried to to buy an LD product, expecting it to last the next decade or two, uh, and finding out that after six months you need to change the bulb or something like that. So, so there are definitely some pitfalls, and there are much many, much more factors to take into account: the quality of the light coming from the LEDs, the flicker, the power factor, the THD. There are, there are many terms involved in an LED lighting, which weren't really a question with the incandescent bulbs because it was just more or less the same for all products, right? So when we as consumers walk into the lighting store and we see some really cool looking, sleek designs that are really tiny, we have you guys to thank, right? Exactly. Do you have anything to add about Ludlum? I think the next couple of months will become interesting to see the, the actual outcome, the final outcome yeah. of the project. Yeah, agreed. And so I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time out of your schedule um, to come down here and talk with us. I know that it's busy. You have a lot of work to do, um, but it's nice to sit down and talk about some of the aspects of this project that might affect our listeners. So thank you for being here today. Welcome. Thank you. This podcast has been brought to you by Technicon. The Ludlum Project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program under grant agreement number 731466.